I'd like to say global greetings um, to all the people that are participating. Normally I say face-to-face -face and online because uh, we think that we are all part of a global society. My organization is the Global School Net, and it's always been our vision to create a uh, schoolhouse online where youth from around the world can learn with one another and from one another. So we feel that we have maybe the greatest opportunity to make an impact uh, with this initiative if we get youth involved. So maybe you make a review of the first priorities. Wow. Soft priorities. <laughs> So uh, we came to our first, the conclusion for our first priority quite quickly after a discussion about what were interesting topics to youth and what youth were thinking about and sort of the uh, state of where education was in both the United States and in Russia. And what we, and just through a, an informal conversation, uh, it, we became aware that on the Russian side, there were a lot of stereotypes about America and American youth. And they weren't necessarily positive stereotypes. They were sort of anti-American stereotypes. And on the American side, we came to the conclusion that Americans don't really know much about the rest of the world, so it's hard for them to get invested in these issues. And not really necessarily their fault, they don't get a lot of international news, they um, are only beginning to get really an international curriculum, a global learning curriculum. So what we thought was a great starting point would be to create some activities that would bridge the gap between Russian youth and American youth and have them learn more about how they're similar, how they feel about uh, the world, what their goals are, what their dreams are, what their issues are. And the organizations that uh, are, were here today as part of the planning group have all done some amazing projects that have students involved in creating content, sharing content about their local community. And we are planning to take some of those projects, okay, some of those projects and expand them so that we have more U.S. and Russian participation, more collaboration, so that they can see what each other, which, which, what each other group is working on. I wanted to add a little bit. The first thing that we would like to promote and to consider it to be a promoter, the priority of the grant uh, is direct contacts uh, of between youth of two countries. It's a base for prosperity and collaboration. We think that it depends on how uh, youth learns how to cooperate and cooperate now. So their possibility to collaborate is a prerequisite to successful, to successful future and to successful mutual work. When they become like you, when they become leaders, when they will be like you working on um, tackling mutual problems and mutual issues. The second priority is linked to cooperations between NGOs. In the beginning I said that we have a lack of such cooperation. First of all, these systems completely differ in Russia and in the United States. In uh, the United States this uh, subject has a great history, a great background, and in the Russia it's quite young and we have a lot to share, a lot to find out and learn from each other, but the information is um, hardly ever exists and uh, we should know uh, which people uh, are involved in which projects in Russia and the United States, where we could uh, make our input, where we could cooperate. And I think that our group uh, has a, a special priority based on this and what I have just said. And in order to develop this cooperation, we have to create uh, some framework of cooperation for adolescents and uh, education of adolescents. And speaking about uh, different projects and ideas in terms of working groups, our working group uh, has worked on one of these ideas and we're planning to make the first steps in order to get acquainted uh, the organizations with each other so that they understand what they do and uh, what mutual benefits they can make.
So um, I just want to um, reinforce what Dennis said and what we really feel that we can add to this conversation is uh, taking the best practices of all of our partner organizations and create a model that other groups maybe will want to utilize to share best practices, to, um, to do professional development, to create a library of resources, to create an online portfolio of what's working. And actually, I, I would like to talk a little bit about, about that. What we've discovered, Global School Nets discovered, is that we've done projects now for about 25 years in the online space. And it wasn't until the web became available in 1994 and we began uh, archiving and creating artifacts online that it really um, jumped ahead because what happens is if you can capture the great things that you're doing through video, through audio, through images, and you can showcase those online, then ex every generation that comes after you, every group that comes after you does at least that and better. You set the benchmark. So uh, some of you mentioned that this is your eighth Eighth working group that you've been working on this. There's been some um, changes uh, in in different uh, in the way it was organized. But if each group um, somehow captures that and puts it online, so that the next group can pick up from where you left off, that will move that forward. And the third priority is linked to the fact of what we should do with youth in general. A lot of years uh, we've been uh, um, treating youth as, as, as an issue that should be tackled. It's uh, associated with alcoholism, with uh, drug addiction, and we would like to avoid this in this process. Because our approach to youth is that youth is, first of all, a resource, a possibility. And we should do our best that the youth is being more actively involved in life of society and could contribute. And we would like interaction between Russian and U.S. organizations in working with youth would be focused on the matters of um, deepening uh, participation by youth and develop some channels for youth uh, to be aware of the facts that are going on in the world now. So I'm talking about, I'm talking about investments in youth and we should understand how we should work with youth and how we should invest. Invest in present, invest in the future so that, so that youth works for the best of the society. So so the society should invest in youth and youth should invest in the society. And some specific things can be voiced right now. One of the things that we would hope to do is, as we move forward, include youth in any of the planning, <laughs> any of the planning that we do, and uh, get their point of view. Um, we are the youth and education group. It would have been uh, interesting for us to have youth participating in the development of this program, but certainly as we go forth and think about um, how we, we might propose grant uh, proposals, I think that, that we will want to also get the youth point of view. And it's clear that a lot of people have said, uh, for example, healthcare, who were talking before us, they were speaking about uh, hospitals, healthcare, that you can influence the system. And the same, the same thing with youth. It is not linked to work with NGOs only. And we understand that such pilot projects of uh, joint projects of US, Russia, US and Russia, they can influence the whole system. And we understand that it is important so that the system should be successful in Russia and the United States. It should be modern, it should be contemporary, and it should be able to make use work in the society, if we make at least some impact on it, at least if we make some contribution to it, then it's not for nothing that we're here. Thank you. So, well, I'd like to add one last word. And, uh, one of the partners that we work with is the World Future Society, and they're very interested in involving youth uh, to design the preferable future, and there's sort of a, a vision of um, preventing the preventable future, trying
trying to bypass the probable future and really designing the preferable future.